Mark Oswald, Chief Economist and Global Strategies, ADM Investor Services. Good morning, Mark, and thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Mark, did we finally reach this correction moment? Because we were talking about correction for a very, very long time, and it looks like that this is the moment. It certainly has the feel about it. I, I still think there are factors in the background which will not completely expunge us of the buy the dip fraternity for the simple reason that we've got high inflation, uh, we've got very low interest rates. Um, you know whether we're, you know, whether the U.S. ten yield is one fifty or whether it's two twenty five doesn't really make a lot of difference in negative in terms of negative um, real returns. Um, so, you know, in, in that sense, people still need to find some sort of return elsewhere in riskier assets. So, uh, you know, I think there is a, definitely a, a correction of a more sizable type underway. We've got increasing volatility and the volatility in itself feeds the correction for the in the sense that we don't really know, you know, we hope, I'm sure everyone's hoping that we'll get a little bit more clarity on where the Fed is going and indeed other central banks. We've got the Bank of Canada next week, the Bank of England thereafter. Um, <clears throat> um, but there is this uncertainty around um, monetary policy, which say even nine months ago wasn't even basically being entertained for this current year. And of course, we've got very inflated asset prices. So you know, the, the vulnerability is quite clearly there and we've still got no real clarity on what's going to happen to the global economy because the supply chain issues are not going away. Um, the, the whole issue around oil prices and energy prices more broadly is one which is very real. And we also don't know, um, you know perhaps the most important thing, how much pricing power is there and wh how far does it stretch? Does it also stretch to the consumer? Um, because if it doesn't stretch to the consumer, then we are probably headed for a bit of a you know a downturn in global activity, uh, despite the, the the sort of uh, you know less concern uh, about COVID perhaps uh, impacting the economy as we go forward. So there are a lot of uncertainties, and that feeds the sort of the the, the need for a little more safety, but on the other hand, doesn't mitigate the fact that real returns in safe assets are very very negative and therefore people still need to find some assets which basically they feel um, can generate a decent nominal uh, not a real um, uh, return so uh, what is the bond market signaling in your opinion we have the 10-year treasury once again back below the 1.8 mark 1.77 uh, between 1.77 and 1.78, which is pretty close, by the way, to 1.8, that's for sure. Uh, and, and certainly, Mark, uh, we would like to know what are you expecting from the Fed next week? I mean, do, do you believe that they're going to be clear uh, with what are they supposed to do and what they intend to do in 2022 in terms of rate hikes? Um, I think they'll be uh, perhaps a little clearer on the rate cycle than they will be on the quantitative tightening. And yet it's the quantitative tightening that we really want to know most about. Because the rate hikes in themselves still don't put us in the territory of, uh, of something which generates a better um, return. Yeah, the rate hikes, were effectively, 180 tells me we've got um, three rate hikes priced in, uh, probably a flatter curve. The bond market so also basically saying if you look at sort of w where the bond market is basically telling us that the end trajectory, the final point for the Fed rate hike cycle is going to be, which is around 177, it's basically telling us, well, you know, if they hike rates even quite substantial, not substantially, we're going to knock the economy into a recession. So the bond market saying you can't actually go too far in your efforts to try and contain inflation, and probably also telling us that markets don't really believe uh, that inflation is going to be a permanent problem throughout the year. I think that's a matter for some debate. Um, you know, we can't establish that, and I don't actually believe that a lot of the problems that that, that are there. Which gives uh, give underpin inflation are going to change that. So, the Fed, I, I suspect, will basically um, outline a, a path which looks at uh, basically says, um, you know, a slightly higher one than they were projecting in in, in December, 
Um, remembering, of course, that we don't actually get a fresh set of forecasts at next week's meeting. That's an important point to make. So all they will basically be saying is we see it higher. Um, the, the question is now, do they actually feel any more comfort that things are going to improve on the inflation front in inflation front and I, I very much very much doubt it so that still leaves the market in a great state of flux um, and I think that's really what the, the short term message is is people need to remember that the volatility that we've got at the moment is not going to go away in any great hurry and indeed even if oil prices you know, and I think a lot of it actually is going to be driven by oil prices because if we were to say have another variant people would suddenly have a huge doubt about demand uh, I still think um, the supply side of the oil market is far more the issue I was wondering what is going to be the main driver for the economic growth in 2022 mark because we, we uh, do already see a little bit of kind of slowdown yeah, I, I think people are sort of jumping all over some of the numbers uh, a little bit too much at the moment. You know, the retail sales numbers, both in the US and the UK, um, <clears throat> you know, they're the really owe as much to supply chain disruptions, people being warned already back in September. By the way, if you want your Christmas presents, you better buy early because they may not be there if you want to go and buy them around Thanksgiving time. So, I, you know, I, I think the jury's a little bit out. Um, I think there is definitely a sign that inflation is starting to impinge on consumers and it is the wrong sort of inflation. It is precisely those things that people can't avoid spending money on. It's energy prices, whether it's household or gasoline, uh, it's um, uh, housing, uh, housing costs in general, um, <clears throat> it's food prices, uh, particularly acute in the UK. Um, uh, and so we're at that point basically where uh, I still think there's a lot of pent-up demand out there we basically a lot of the the strength of GDP that we expected for 2022 didn't really quite get completed so we've got very low inventories in pretty much anything one cares to think of we, you know we still know that there are supply chain problems in the auto sector the automakers are still basically postponed so there's still a lot to underpin it out there the question is i think basically at what point might we get something which equates to demand destruction simply because of the level of uh, the, the the sustained level of inflation that we're getting um <clears throat> and how that discourages people um, from you know, doing what they would expect to normally to do, rebuild inventories, for example, for consumers basically to revert to a more normal lifestyle, um, but then suddenly find that actually they haven't got as much money in their pocket. Um, certainly consumers are going to be pressing quite hard on the wage front and that's actually going to be a key aspect of what happens through the rest of the year. Do you know, is there enough strength that you know, do um, employees have enough bargaining strength, particularly given the labor shortages that there are? You know, you've only got Germany reporting today that they're basically looking to hire, uh, uh, well, allow extra 400,000 skilled migrants every single year because of the labor shortages that there are in Germany. And it's not exclusive to Germany. That's a problem we've got the world over, that we've got basically a labor skills mismatch relative to the economy that we've got now. And that makes the outlook for the economy even more uncertain because this isn't going to be the economy that pre-existed um, the pandemic. And so that makes things really, really complex for people trying to second guess this. And it's, you know, in, a, in a word to the wise, I would suggest people don't go for big predictions at the moment because it's a very uncertain outlook. And I think the most important thing we will only establish in the second half of the year is how much productive capacity, we've seen it in the oil industry, but we need to see more broadly, how much productive capacity has been lost due to the pandemic. Well, that's that's a pretty important point. Thank you so much. Mark Oswald, Chief Economist and Global Strategies, ADM Investor Services. Thank you for joining us and have a great weekend. Thank you.